If you want to build a massive chest, you have to stop by expressing it right now. Welcome to Heinz Seniors Coaching Up. Get access to the P3AK High Intensity Training eBook and its exclusive video tutorials. Commit with Heinz Coaching right now and be provided with a year of meal plans, training programs, and more. www.p3akday.com. There is no room for the little. I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Hey guys, we're super excited to be here at the LA Fit Expo. It's our third year in a row. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be launching a tasty pastry. It's a low-carb Pop-Tart. It's got three to four grams of net carbs. And we love this show. This is our best place to be in LA. RX Television on RxMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as hashtag Ask Dave, your 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions, diet, training, supplementation, IFBB pros, news, whatever's on your mind, it is all on the table. Hope you all had a great Christmas. We are in that weird phase of the year right now between Christmas and New Year's where you don't know what day it is, you don't know what time it is, but the New Year's is just two and a half days away. So now bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave, first of all, I know you and your family had a bit of a run-in with uh, whatever sickness is going around right now. I know um, uh, you were talking to me the other night, and you said you are kind of feeling little tingles. First off, how are, how are you feeling? How's your family feeling? And do you, were you guys able to do anything this past Christmas? Um, everyone got sick in my house. My wife really got slammed because she's been up with my uh, with the sick kids, and she's not sleeping as well. But I... Um, I, I guess averted it somehow. I got a little low grade. Something was not right, but I, you know, I was mega dosing basically. I was taking my glutath. I was taking actually my triimmune from Titan Medical, which is zinc, uh, vitamin C, and glutathione. I've been injecting that every single day, a cc of that. I've been taking zinc. I was taking zinc and 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 uh, quinine pills actually because I thought maybe I had COVID, which I didn't. Obviously, we got tested a couple times. Um, I was taking, you know, my regular demineralized, omegalized, all, all my normal vitamins. Um, I even added quercetin into the, into the uh, mix as well because um, that's a good immune system enhancer. And I, uh, I try to, you know, get a nap in if I could during the day uh, on the weekends with the kids. And it worked. You know, I kind of got through it. I, I tell, look, I tell everyone, if you, if you take the right supplementation, if you eat and sleep is, is the most important thing, obviously, when you're not, when you're on that verge of your immune system not really functioning well. Um, I also take a pro I take a fruit and vegetable extract product too, which I believe is really good for immune system as well. You know, I don't really, you know, when I do get sick, it doesn't really last as long as a normal person. So I really do attribute that to the supplementation aspect. And of course, you know, good diet too. You, you, you know, if you're eating junk food all day long, obviously that's not gonna help your immune system. You gotta get enough protein in. You don't need an excessive amount, but you need enough protein. You should try to get in, you know, some fruits and vegetables if you're, you know, when you're sick or something like that. And obviously, if you're on a contest diet, you can't do that. But, you know, it's about balancing it. And uh, so, knock on wood, I don't want to, like, you know, get sick <laughs> tomorrow because I'm jinxing myself. But really, truth is that you have to build, you have to really up your supplementation when you're not feeling well. And I think that's the key. Glad to hear you guys are doing better and hope everyone watching is doing safe as well. Let's go to the questions. The first two questions, of I, course. Well, Sid, I wanted to just bring up yeah. one thing. You know, I, I kind of mentioned it to you earlier. I don't know if it, but we had another death in our industry, uh, Manny Torres. Manny Torres uh, was a really good bodybuilder back in the mid 2000s and he was battling it out at the USA Nationals. Never got his pro card, but he was like right there. I mean, he was 
top top of the line. He was a really really popular trainer in Las Vegas too. After you know he stopped competing, he actually trained Latoria Watts for her uh, Olympia victories yeah. and uh, the lead up to that as well. She he was her trainer for many years, and and he trained a million. There, there was a lot of people he he's whose lives he has touched, and I don't know exactly what the cause of death was. Um, so I don't want to speculate on that, but um, I know he passed, and uh, there's a lot of people very upset about that. So I wanted to just send out some condolences uh, and prayers to his family and friends. Certainly, pass our deepest wishes to me and his family. Let's go to the questions again. The first two questions from the Deep Flumbo Experience. That first question from Peter uh, Deep. I'm trying to figure out the perfect supplement stack for heart health based on what you suggest. Currently, I'm taking three grams fish oil. 2.6 grams evening primrose oil, 100 mg of Co uh, CoQ10. Um, of course, that goes with low intensity cardio every day and healthy diet. I also use mac nut oil on my meal and olive oil. Is there something you would add and suggest to optimize heart health? <laughs> he's doing pretty good. He he got all he's got my whole protocol down pretty pat. This guy. And uh, just to let you guys know, the Day Plum Experience app is my app that I um, you can download from the Android Store or the iTunes Store. Uh, it's $29 a month, and you get me as your coach. It's basically all my writings, all my videos I've ever done in one place. Plus, I answer everyone's questions in an open forum, so you see all the questions and answers. I do a Q&A video exclusively for the app once a week, and we put up a, a workout of the week up every single week. And now we're giving, for these guys whose questions we picked of the week, we're going to be giving out a free uh, stimuli to those two guys because they're the questions of the week. So... A lot of cool stuff happening at the Day Plumbo Experience app. You might want to download it. It's kind of like having me in your back pocket. Um, but heart health is interesting. You know, sometimes the, the best thing you can do for your heart is to get checked out to make sure you don't have any problems. Rich Gaspari went on the record and talked about his, his uh, issue he had. You know, he had listened to our show and heard me talking about cardiac CT calcium scores. And he went and got one. And his calcium score was like 4,000. It was like through the roof or something like that. And then he went and got a, you know, a follow-up scan and, you know, he had blockages and he had to have some stents put in. It saved his life. So diagnostic testing is the most important. Get your cardiac CT calcium score. You can walk into any, any almost any uh, testing facility. You don't even need a prescription and just pay for it. It's like 60 bucks or something like that. And they'll tell you if you have calcium buildup and what your score is. And then you can kind of go from there. If the, if the score is less, greater than zero, then you can talk to your cardiologist. If it's zero, then you have nothing to worry about. So that's something that, that's very important to heart health, obviously. Getting an echocardiogram once a year is really good. That'll tell the function of the heart. So the CT scan will tell you whether the vessels are open and, and, and blood flow is good, but the, the actual echocardiogram looks at your heart. It's like an ultrasound of your heart while it's beating and contracting, and they can measure chamber sizes and stuff like that, and how much output of blood that you're putting out. Is the heart pumping enough blood? You know, And that's called your cardiac output or ejection fraction. And that's a lot, they can tell a lot from that. EKGs, they can tell a little bit, but that's, you know, everyone's, so oh, I got an EKG. You don't really learn that much from an EKG unless you have an arrhythmia or something like that. So definitely get your echo, get your, you know, uh, cardiac CT scan or calcium score. Supplements he mentioned are perfect. What's in omega lies is perfect. Fish oil, evening primrose oil, those are your essential fatty acids, help keep those LDL cholesterol levels down. Good monounsaturated fats like macadamia nut oil, extra virgin olive oil, really good for the heart. CoQ10 really helps with the e efficiency of the heart beating. Uh, ubiquinone is, is a better form of CoQ10. Um, Life Extension makes a brand of it, I use that. I mean, take 100 to 200 milligrams of that a day, you know, and he mentioned that he was on 100, so that's good. There's really not that much more that you really need for heart health. You know, it's blood vessel wall health, you know, and once again, controlling blood pressure, make sure your blood pressure is down. If you're, if you're running high blood pressures, go on a, 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 a common, you know, simple ACE inhibitor like Ramipril, Lisinopril. That's kidney protective and it will keep your blood pressure down, which is also going to cause any problems, you know, if you, uh, if you have high, you know, high blood pressure. We don't want that extra strain on the heart at all. And these are things that, that, once again, you have to be monitoring on a regular basis. You can't just look at it once a year and, and, and in, in one snapshot and say, okay, I'm good or I'm not good. No, you got you to... This is something you should, everyone should have a blood pressure cuff in their house. They have these auto inflates you can buy on Amazon.com, you can buy them at CVS. And check your blood pressure a couple times a week just to make sure it's running all right. Check it every night if you want. And there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, th these are simple things that you can do for heart health. But I think that the diagnostic tests are the most important. And then if you have problems, then we can address how to, you know, reverse some of these problems. Second question, again, from the Dave Palumbo Experience app, Wayland O'Weller. Um, 
how much time is needed to increase the anabolic and metabolic rate when prepping with a caloric deficit? The benefits of a long-term versus short-term increase, a week versus uh, a meal of increased calories. I think he's talking about like a cheat meal, maybe of like having, you know, a cheat meal versus having a whole week of eating more. You know, I think a cheat meal once a week is, is something that's not just metabolically um, effective, obviously. If you eat a cheat meal, you're going to stimulate your metabolism. But it's something to, for people to look forward to. You know, if I just give you like a little bit more carbs at every meal for like a couple days, yeah, you're going to be better. But let's face it, you know, when you're dieting, it's nice to know, hey, on Saturday night, I can go eat, you know, sushi rolls, or I can go have burger and fries, or I can go have chicken parm, you know, something to like just get out of the doldrum of, of the regular diet food. You know, to me, that's better and it works better mentally for people because it's like, a, it's like almost like a release from the diet for, for one meal or a couple hours out of the day, whatever it is. Whereas if you're just playing with carb amounts, all right, you can eat more white rice here and a little more potato here. People go insane. You know, I got 15 more weeks of this, you know. Yeah, granted, you know, we, we want to look our best and we'll do anything to sacrifice. But it's nice to be able to, you know, look forward to a meal, you know, with your family or your loved ones, you know, you know once a week. And it's just, it, like I said, it was always something that gave me like an escape and something to look forward to. Hey, I'm going to really diet hard this week because I know Saturday I'm going to get to go out with my friends and we're going we're gonna to eat, you know, uh, a nice cheat meal. So I think that the cheat meal is more effective than just bumping, you know, carbs up, you know, here and there. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't still do the carb increases too. Uh, sometimes a cheat meal is just not enough and, and the person's metabolism is really cranking. But my, by and far, I don't see metabolic slowdown when people get a cheat meal once a week. Let's go to our Instagram questions. Again, if you're not already following us there, handle is official underscore RX muscle. If you're watching us for the first time on YouTube, hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell. You're not going to miss any of our shows, segments, updates. Right now on the channel, all new episodes of Heavy Muscle Radio. And then, of course, last night's episode of the After Hours podcast. Uh, we have an interview from last week with uh, Carlos Thomas Jr., overall winner at the NPC Nationals, getting his thoughts uh, on his potential pro debut as well. Um, so, again, if you haven't already done so, subscribe below. Hit the notification bell. You're not going to miss anything we have going on on this channel. If you like what you're watching, hit the like button. Comment below. That helps. And as always... We appreciate all of your support. Good one here from IFBB Tenacity. Um, we always talk about food digest uh, digestive issues. What tests would you recommend to learn what food create digestive issues? I mean, there are some sensitivity you know, tests you can go for. There's some allergy testing things. You know what the best way to find out what, what foods you're sensitive to? Test it out. You know, if you're having digestive problems, eliminate different foods from your diet until you figure out what's going on. The main foods that, that bother people's stomach usually start with dairy because it's lactose. Most people can't digest a lot of lactose. So if you're eating cheeses or yogurts or, or milk products in your, in your diet or maybe even a whey protein that's not like a whey isolate, you know, maybe a, it might be a cheaper isolate or a cheap, it's, you know, a blend between a concentrate and isolate. Try to eliminate the lactose from your diet first. That usually solves most people's problems. You know, and then the second issue usually some people have is some people are wheat sensitive. Not everyone. I think some people, I think way too many people think that, they're, that they can't eat wheat in their diet, and that's just not the case. There's only a couple of people that are truly allergic to wheat. You know, they're gluten uh, insensitive, and they, they need to eliminate, you know, gluten products from their, from their diet. Um, it's not a big percentage of people, but there are people, I do know people, you know, that have, you know, celiac disease, and they, and they can't have wheat. I haven't seen too many other allergies, I mean, any sensitivities. I mean, some people can't eat peanut butter because they're allergic to it or the shellfish because they're allergic to it. But they know, people know that because they, get, they have an allergic reaction when they eat it. But as far as sensitivities, it's usually lactose. I mean, that's usually the number. If I have to guess, someone says to me, oh, I get bloated, I, I get diarrhea, I get gas. I said, what are you eating? And it's usually, you know, it's usually uh, from lactose. Now, I, I've worked with a lot of girls, you know, who are eating a ton of vegetables while they're dieting, like too much broccoli or too much, and they get gassy from that because, you know, broccoli makes you gassy. I mean, everyone knows that. It's, it's the old, you know, broccoli farts type of uh, joke, but it's true. I mean, if you t even I notice it because I eat a lot of the vegetables. Sometimes I'll, at night I'll do broccoli and I'll do um, um, these little big pea pods. I like those. And I'll, I'll, I'll make too much of it, and I'll be like gassy as hell later. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Because, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty clean eater. 
it's, it's, it's too much of the, uh, those vegetables that make you a little gassy. And if you're having trouble, you know, getting gassy or you're uncomfortable, your stomach bloated because you're not going to the bathroom adequately, obviously incorporating a fiber product like Fiberlyze is going to also be a, a help. But as far as getting back to the original question, sensitivities, I only see lactose. Unless you're one of these people that are, have a lot of allergies, then you might want to get tested. I had, we had my son tested for, for some, a bunch of allergies, and he was allergic to nothing, basically. You know, everything came back, he was fine. He had no sensitivity to anything. So, and we just did it because he was having some skin irritations. Um, I still believe it's lactose. You know, uh, I don't know if they really tested that, but um, obviously I'm lactose intolerant, which you know, more than likely can mean that he could also be. So look at your parents, too. If your parents have any certain allergies, that's uh, another clue to take a look at. Jacob Jameson, I hate the show so much. I'd rather go into another six month lockdown than listen to another episode. Good for you, Jacob, bringing back the I hate the show. I'm a young guy, 24 years old, debating getting on TRT, so I don't have uh, to experience the testosterone dip that occurs post cycle. I know you hate the term, quote, blasting and cruising, but are there any real negatives that exist with getting on TRT now when my natural levels are more than or more or less fine? A couple of weeks after a cycle, I know you have a baby making protocol, but I would say fertility is a thing I'm most worried about now. Yeah, I, I think that the people today don't want to suffer at all. They don't want to have any uncomfortableness or any change, and they're very nervous about going off a cycle. I've never seen such anxiety in people. You know, back when I was competing, it was part of the it was part of the, the game. You know, you you did a cycle, you grew, you went off the cycle, you cleaned out. You went back on the cycle again for your contest. You, after the contest, you went off the cycle and you cleaned out. You're not losing anything, all right? Trust me. You might deflate a little bit. You're not going to be as strong. Maybe your sex drive is not going to be as good. It's okay. It's only going to be six to eight weeks, you know? And guess what? The first four weeks, you're still going to have all those drugs in your system because they don't leave immediately. The second you stop taking your last injection doesn't mean the next day you have nothing in your system. It takes three to four weeks for the stuff to come out of your system. So stop being a baby, okay? There's no reason for a 20-something year old to be on HRT. And even the guys, look, guys, I have guys who are in their 50s saying, I, I, when I come off cycle, I'm, I'm going on, a, I'm back on my HRT. I'm like, then if you're on HRT, then don't do a cycle, you know? If that's what you're looking for. Okay, but if you're going to do a heavy cycle, you better clean out for six to eight weeks after the, after the drug cycle's over. You do your HCG, you do your Clomid, that takes four weeks, so you're really still on something. And then you go four weeks on nothing, and then you go, then you go back on. It's not a toxicity issue, okay, because we know HRT is not toxic. It's a receptor sensitivity issue. If you're always staying at a higher level, even on HRT, that's higher than what you're normally going to produce. Your, reset, your androgen receptors are not going to increase their receptivity to the, to the point that they would if you went off cycle completely. Because when levels dip really low, what happens is the androgens, I mean, the, 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 the cells think that there's not enough androgen pr present. So, uh, excuse me. The cells think there's not enough androgen receptors to accept what's out there. They don't know that you, you just did a cycle and now you have nothing left in your system because they're so used to a certain level of testosterone in the system. So what happens is the cells start to produce more androgen receptors on the uh, nucleus of the cell. So looking for more, you know, testosterone. And after four weeks of doing this, they get, they restore themselves. So that's why you do your four weeks of PCT, you do your four weeks off, and then you can go back on. So you cleaned yourself out from a toxicity standpoint and you've restored receptor sensitivity so that when you go back on a cycle, you actually get maximum results. Why would you want to get anything less than that? It doesn't make sense. Let's go to Zoro5144. How to work out with plantar fasciitis. Yeah, I, I suffer from that. Uh, uh, and I've suffered from it. You know, one of the solutions a lot of people find that works really well is to get, you know, and I recommend this for, for all guys that work out anyway, is custom orthotics for your shoes. So the plantar, for, uh, fa the plantar fascia is, is, if here's the bottom of your foot, it kind of runs along here, and a lot of times that band of tissue that goes here can get inflamed. A lot of times it's because we have, the person has a weak arch, and they have flat feet, like I do. I have very flat, I, I think I actually have concave feet. <laughs> but, so if that, if that plantar fascia, uh, plantar, um, excuse me, if that plantar uh, strip of connective tissue is getting weaker or inflamed, it's going to really hurt. It feels like someone's stabbing a, a knife into the bottom of your foot. 
But if you get a custom orthotic made where they actually can mold your feet and they make a custom insert that goes in your shoe, and any podiatrist can make this for you or, or chiropractor usually makes them too, you wear them in your shoes, it holds your foot. It actually creates an artificial arch for your foot, uh, which does a number of things. Number one, it'll take the, the pain and the pressure off of that, that, um, that plant to aponeurosis you know, or the band of connective tissue, which over the course of a week or two should, should you know, alleviate the pain. But it also gives your body perfect biomechanics because now your feet sit perfectly with a good arch. And even if you put a you know a thousand pounds on your back to squat, those orthotics are holding your foot into the right configuration, which is aligning the rest of your body properly, which is going to give you better leg development. Um, which I, I see a lot of guys who have flat feet have very good front quads and they have nothing in the in the adductor inner thigh or, or hamstring glute area because everything they're always falling forward because they don't have any arch support. Uh, as soon as you put the orthotics in there, it kind of corrects the uh, balance of their legs. And that's something that I noticed in my physique. Uh, and I have all my guys, and I tell everyone about custom orthotics. I mean, it's, it's like if you wear a belt and you use straps, it's, an, it's another essential piece of uh, equipment that you should use. Every NFL football player must wear custom orthotics. They're all made. Let's go to lift for pump. Uh, in regards to fasted cardio, how long – do you have to go without eating for it to be considered, quote, fasted? Who knows? You know, fasted, the, the, the only true fasted cardio as there really would be would be first thing in the morning when you wake up or after you weight train. Because after you weight train, you've exhausted a lot of glycogen, so you've created a, uh, a depleted state. Uh, whereas overnight, you're creating a depleted state because you're not eating for, like, whatever it is, six to eight hours that you're asleep, so that's fasted. I mean, other than that, you're not going to get a true fasted state um, that doesn't mean that cardio is not going to be effective. I mean, if you, if you have a busy schedule and you can slip, you know, on your lunch break at work, you can slip in an hour of cardio and you had a, a lunch or a snack or whatever, one of your meals, whatever, an hour and a half before that, that doesn't mean you're not going to burn fat. So don't get all neurotic about it. If you have the luxury of choosing when to do your cardio, first thing in the morning and after you train are usually the best times. But otherwise, it doesn't matter. You're going to still burn fat. Uh, relentless Luca, should you worry about waistline size in the off season? When we talk about size, I, I, I'm, 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 the way I interpret that is, is fatness. Okay. So if you're getting slabs of fat hanging off your obliques, okay. Cause you're over, cause you're gaining too much body fat. Yes, that's a problem. Okay. However, if your waist just gets bigger because you're eating a lot of food and you're bloated all the time, you know, but yeah, you don't really have a lot of body fat there. Then yeah, I wouldn't worry about it now. There are some people that wear these waist shapers. They work. They're like, uh, you know, torture devices, however. They don't feel comfortable. You're always being squeezed here. But they work. If you wear them consistently, you'll get some, some benefit from it because um, it, it trains your waist to stay smaller. Having said that, however, you know, like I said, as long as you're not accumulating large amounts of fat in your body, if you genetically have a small waist, it's going to get small when you diet again. That's just the way it works, you know. Even if you get fat, it's going to get small. I just don't recommend that people get fat in the off-season around their waist. I don't want slabs of fat hanging off your lower back. It's just going to make it really difficult as a man to get that waistline in shape. But that doesn't mean you should restrict your, be restrictive in your eating, and then you're going to sacrifice building muscle. Okay, that's not acceptable either. Serious and silliness. Your opinion on Trestolone acetate? I don't think it's a good steroid. I don't think it's ever been a good steroid. It's a very high uh, aromatizing agent. In other words, it converts to estrogen at a very high rate. Um, it's really not that great of an anabolic. Uh, I think a lot of people used it. I think you know uh, Tony Huge made it very popular with his uh, um, with his when he was selling it over there because it was legally or it was easily available. I don't know if it was legal technically, but it was it was definitely more available, and people were able to buy it. So they were buying it because it sounded like Trend Malone. Trust alone, trend alone, but it really isn't like trend alone. It doesn't work like that, and, and trend, trend alone doesn't even convert to estrogen, so it's really not like it. So, is it better than nothing? Yeah, probably. But is it a good steroid? If I, if you can, if you had to choose between that and other ones that are better, no, it's not. Okay, um, I don't like any steroids that convert at a very high rate to estrogen. Uh, this one's right up your alley. It's from uh, Glenn Hill. How did you determine four G was a good dosage for a glucosamine? Uh, trial and error, really, to be honest with you. I, I would go out and buy generic glucosamine pills. Use, I think I was using vitamin shops, and I would just experiment. I'd go two grams, because that's usually the dose, right? They recommend two grams a day. 
2,000 milligrams. And I never felt any, any relief from it. So I go to three grams. Because I stopped using a lot of times. Then I said, I wonder if it's just dose-related things. I started thinking about it like mechanistically. I said, you know, you eat protein, and if you don't get enough protein, you don't build and repair muscle. Connective tissue and joints are pretty, you know, there's a lot of that was in your body. I'm like, I'm wondering if, you, if we're just not taking enough of this stuff in. I said, you know, you probably need to scoop the stuff into a shake like you do with, the, you know, protein powder. But the stuff, glucosamine tastes disgusting. You, it, it's the most gross tasting thing you could ever imagine. So I, I kept upping the dose. And when I hit four grams a day, I said, whoa, I, I feel something here. <laughs> And I did the same thing with MSM, which is, a, which is methyl sulfonylmethane, which is a biologically available source of sulfur, which is what we find a lot in the joint and connective tissues. Uh, and we don't really eat a lot of sulfur in our diet. So I, I, when I combined those two at a four gram dose of each, it was like magic happened. But it, it, it took a few weeks to feel the effects of it, but I definitely noticed it. And so I started recommending it to my clients. Hey, try four grams and four grams. Uh, I would send them to the vitamin shop, buy two bottles, bottle of MSM, bottle of uh, glucosamine, and that's how it started. And then I said, you know what? When I started making my own product line, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put everything in the right dose in one bottle in a month's supply to make it easy because I hated using two different bottles. And then I found out boron was important for you know joint, so I wanted to put that in there. So I, you know, I, I, I create, and then of course I found out about UC2 collagen and suppressing the immune system. Uh, when it attacks collagen. So I, there's a lot of technology, I'm not going to go in, in detail, in Arthrolyze, and that's how Arthrolyze came about. But it was really a trial and error thing. And that's how a lot of the stuff we learn in this industry is through trial and error. I tell this all the time. How do you find out what the best diet that works is? You, you try every freaking diet, and then you find out the one that's most effective. And then you, when you combine that with the science of what's going on, you get, a, you get a formula. And that's how I, you know, that's when I teach my secret to becoming a diet guru course, and I give you the formula of how to d design diets. That's where it comes from. Let's go to Kevin O'Connor, uh, Kevin Connor, rather. Um, is it good to take ibuprofen after injections to prevent swollen? No, it, it's actually the worst thing you can do because ibuprofen, which is a non steroidal anti inflammatory, inhibits cyclooxygenase enzymes, um, which inhibits inflammation in the body. We don't want to inhibit inflammation, especially after you weight train, because that's the signal for your body to re repair itself. Okay, so. Whenever I would tell people, look, if you have a pain, uh, like we used to take in the old days when we would take like you know some of the uh, the site injection oils like the Chris Clark, it worked really well, but it, it would leave you sore. Never took ibuprofen, Tylenol. Tylenol is a better painkiller because it doesn't inhibit inflammation, and that's the key. If you if you're in if you're sore, take Tylenol. I don't ever, to be honest with you, my wife loves ibuprofen, you know, for headaches and stuff and all whenever she gets sick. I don't ever use ibuprofen. I just I just don't think it's a good it works effectively, you know, uh, it's a good pain med and it's definitely a good anti-inflammatory, but I don't use it ever. I only use Tylenol if I have a headache or if I have um, a high temperature because I think it's a better for bodybuilding purposes to use that because it's, no, it's not a good idea to inhibit inflammation unless you have excessive amounts of it in your body. And that's, you know, they found, they did a study with old people who are 90 years old that old people taking non-steroidals like ibuprofen actually recover better from workouts because they have too much inflammation in their body. So it kind of tempers that inflammation a little bit. Uh, but these were like 90 year old people. So, uh, but for the average person who's in good shape, who works out hard, taking ibuprofen, especially on a regular basis, is not a good idea. It's also not good for your kidneys. We'll finish off with a couple of um, comparison questions. We're getting a lot of these comparison questions. I think, I think one of the, uh, New Year's resolutions for 2020. We're going to bring back Versus. So Versus okay. is a show that we uh, started about a, two and a half years ago or so. Simple enough, we would have, you know, bodybuilder, bodybuilder, David, do comparison. Sometimes you have the the fantasy matchups, right? Like, you know, hey, Rami versus somebody from the 90s or what have you, whatever. So Victor Richards we're versus Big Rami. Sorry? Victor Richards versus Big Rami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we're getting a lot of those. So, um we should definitely bring back that show yeah. uh, in the next coming week. Anyway, so let's 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 hit on a couple of them. Who had the better physique, Greg Kovacs or Art Atwood? Competitively speaking, Art Atwood. Chris Angeletti, if 2002 version of Marcus Rule competed in 2020, Mister Olympia, how would he do? Where would he place? Would he beat Big Rami? Good question. I think Rami might be 
better in the hamstring glutes than Marcus. Uh, although Marcus got harder, but Marcus had problems sometimes with the conditioning around in the glute hamstring area too. So I think Rami would win, but it would be a good battle. Marcus, close second. This one is uh, going to conjure up a little controversy. Okay. Benoit 847 was the last one we'll do. Okay. Sean Ray versus Flex Lewis, both in their prime, who wins? It's a good question. Um, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to to make that comparison because without seeing them next to each other, and putting them in pictures next to each other really wouldn't do justice either. Sean got pretty hard at some of his shows. He was pretty damn good. It would definitely be a good matchup. Um, Flex, I haven't seen. We haven't seen Flex in the open division yet, so I haven't seen the best Flex Lewis yet. I, I want to see him compete in the open where he doesn't have to make a weight class and suck himself down. Because you can't use the Flex Lewis off-season pictures, because that's not fair. Because you know you put them on Instagram, people filter them and shit like that. I want to see Flex Lewis at his best on stage in the open class, where he doesn't have to make weight. Because I think making weight sucked his upper body down too much. So I'd have to say Sean Ray, up until this point, would win. But I think Flex Lewis will be better once he hits the open class and, and has doesn't have that weight restriction on him. I don't know if you've had any conversations with him. Your gut feeling, do we see Flex Lewis on the open stage this upcoming Olympia in December? 100%. 100%. I know he's been wanting to do it. I mean, him and I text once in a while. And he, you know, he was trying to get his wife pregnant again. And and she's pregnant now. And he's all in, he told me. You know, this was, you know, like two months ago. He's like, Dave, I I got her pregnant. You know, I'm all in now. This is it. I'm going... You know, and, and I respect that about him because you know what? The guy wanted to, you know, his family was first. It was important to him. He already won seven Olympias. And he wanted to, you know, have another child. And so he was, that was a very unselfish thing for him. It, you know, for a lot of guys, they'd be like, bodybuilding is more important, you know. And, and, and so that took, you know, that, that shows, you know, that Flex Lewis really is a family man. He really cares about his family. And now he can do his thing and, uh, and try to live out his dream of doing that open class and possibly winning, you know, uh, an Olympia, which would be insane. But uh, I think that uh, the rest probably did his body well, too, because I know yeah. that, you know, he, he had a lot of injuries he was dealing with, which is normal for a guy at his level and his point in his career. This is when the injuries come on. So maybe the rest was what he needed. I know he never stopped training, but I think the rest is what his body needed. Now he can give 100% to the process and let's see what he brings to the table. I mean, I, I think he has another level of excitement to the Olympia for next year, for sure. Not to mention, of course, the big move from Florida last yeah, year that's... to Vegas, opening up the new right. gym, the new venture, moving his family out there. Obviously, a very, 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 very busy time in the life of Flex Lewis. Well, he's so... smart. He killed every yeah. all. He did it all in one shot. He didn't have to like yeah. you know <laughs> prolong it. He's like, I'm going to try to get her pregnant. I'm going to move. I'm going to build a gym. And then I can get back to bodybuilding. And, and that was the right way to do it because that's his future right there, you know? So there you go. So it's going to be very exciting. I know um, this past Heavy Muscle Radio, for those that haven't already watched it, Dave, uh, Lee Priest, John Romano, Chris Aceto, um Carla. Yeah, Carlo. Carlo Filippone was, was amazing on the show. Uh, they, they, they kind of broke down the year that it was obviously a very, very uh, event-filled and not all for the good reasons. Uh, 2021, the year of bodybuilding, but then also kind of looking forward to next year and some of the things that you could expect to see, some bold predictions. And, and I know Carlo was uh, very adamant that, you know, in terms of the bold prediction that he could very well see Flex Lewis winning the Mr. Olympia. And I don't think he's certainly alone in, in that opinion. So again, if you haven't already watched that, it's a great episode, by the yeah. way. It's a higher wrap-up of this year that was uh, 2021 in bodybuilding and some of the things that we can look forward to uh, in the year 2022 again heavy muscle radio on the rx muscle youtube channel if you haven't already done so subscribe below hit the notification bell uh generally speaking now that episode goes live so you know sunday nights you know dave will text me to like all right we're gonna go live at 11 p.m now grad fine i have the advance notice but again if you're subscribed if you've hit that notification bell you'll know when we're going live you will know and not only that you'll be able to participate in the conversation as well it's a fun Kind of a thing. It's Sunday night. You don't have anything going on. You know, you have Dave, you have Chris, you have John, you have generally speaking Lee Priest, and then again, yeah, Carlo is on on as well. Uh, it's a fun, fun conversation. Oh, yeah. 
Um, we get all the Aussies. Anything, we get all the crazy Aussies on there too because they're awake you know, yeah. during that time. So it, it, you know, it's again, it's it, you know, I, I again, I can only look at it from my perspective, right? If you're a fan of just pure bodybuilding conversation uh, from real obvious bodybuilding nerds, uh, <laughs> you know, that's the place to find it. it sure. It's a great conversation. The fact that you're getting to uh, partake in the conversation as well is awesome. So again, to do so, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you won't miss any of those upcoming live episodes of promise we're going to be doing a lot more of those especially now that the arnold classic is only two months away Crazy. <laughs> it's hard to believe right yeah. i mean we literally I just got at the end of the year already it's, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's nuts but again uh, you know now we're going to be shifting back into contest season so there's going to be a lot to talk about and of course we'd love for you to be along for the ride it's going to do for this episode of ask dave thanks tyler shore dave palumbo i'm sadiq faruqi we'll see you next week